Now that we've reviewed the different types of central line catheters, let's discuss some of the specific parts and equipment you'll be using. Soap or hand sanitizer. If you use a hand sanitizer, be sure it is alcohol-based. Clean gloves. These will be used each time you handle the needleless connector. Face mask. This is worn when doing specific tasks, such as changing the CVAD dressing. Catheter lumen and needleless connector. Your CVAD or accessed port can have one or more lumens or tubing. You will hear your CVAD referred to as a single lumen, double lumen, or triple lumen. Each lumen is covered by a needleless connector. The connector helps to keep bacteria from entering the lumen. The lumen tubing will have a clamp which is closed when fluid is not going through it. Non-coring infusion needle. A right angle non-coring needle is a special round tip needle used to access the port of an implanted catheter. Tubing is attached to each coring needle and the tubing includes a clamp and a needleless connector covering the access port. Germ removing or antiseptic cleaning solutions. An antiseptic wipe is used to clean the needleless connector and doing dressing changes. This can be an alcohol wipe or chlorohexidine gluconate CHG with alcohol wipe. Flushing syringes. Each syringe has a needleless tip on one end and a plunger on the other. The needleless tip is inserted into the port and you empty the fluid from the syringe by pushing on the plunger. The syringe is most commonly filled with either sodium chloride, also called normal saline, or the medication heparin. The clamp. Clamps or closures are located directly on the CVAD tubing, usually right above the needleless connector and is part of the IV tubing. The clamp can be a clip clamp, rolling clamp, or sliding clamp. Emergency clamp. You are often given an emergency clamp to use in case the tubing breaks above the clamp site on the tubing. IV tubing with spiked and insertion end. IV tubing connects your fluid solution to your needleless connector. The tubing has two ends. The spike end is inserted into the bag of fluid. The other end is inserted into the needleless connector. All tubing includes a clamp that helps you control the flow of fluid. Some tubing contains a device so you can set how fast your fluid should flow. Antibiotics and fluid bags. Some antibiotics are already mixed in a bag with sodium chloride or sterile water. Others come in a powder and you have to mix them right before you use them. That is because the medication is only effective for 24 hours or less after they are mixed. Fluid or parenteral nutrition. Fluid such as dextrose or sugar with electrolytes or parenteral nutrition is given through your line. Parenteral nutrition, also called PN, is liquid nutrition given when you are not able to eat by mouth for an extended period of time. It is sometimes yellow in color because of the vitamins that are added. The PN is attached to IV tubing and a special filter. Sterile dressing, medicated pad, and a securement device. The access site is where the CVAD enters the body or where the angled needle enters the port. It is covered with a sterile adhesive barrier that is waterproof and prevents bacteria from entering your site. A soft, circular medicated pad, bio patch, may be placed around the tubing at the entry site. A securement device is often used with pick lines to hold the line in place. Dressing Change Kit the supplies for changing a dressing are often available as kits. The kit routinely contains a mask, two pairs of gloves, cleaning swabs, sterile barrier, gauze, and a transparent dressing. Syringe pump. If the fluids are going to be given over several hours, you may be given a syringe pump. The pump allows you to program how much fluid you should be giving each hour. Topical anesthetic for implanted catheters only. Topical anesthetic can be placed over the port site to numb the area. The numbing agent can be a cream or given as an injection with a tiny needle. The cream is placed on the skin over the port entry site with a gloved hand 
a sterile occlusive dressing is placed on top of the cream. For injections, this is given right before needle insertion.